Yo, let's talk about DTF printers and DTF transfers. Fat Man Scoop, Brooklyn Clan. What's up, y'all? This is Fat Man Scoop. And right now, you're watching the Sensei, the number one, the king, my dude, Big Brando. He taught me, personally, me, Fat Man Scoop. All you gotta do is keep your mouth closed and your ears open, listen to the man talk. That's knowledge personified right there, and I wouldn't trust nobody else but my dude, Big Brando. And I said it. Fat Man Scoop, Big Brando! Let's go! What's everybody? Boy Big Brando and today let's talk about DTF printers and DTF transfers. This is the big debate currently in the t-shirt space. On one hand you got the people that love it, on the other hand you got the people that hate it. Now these are just my thoughts on the whole thing. As you guys know I have a small scale DTF printer. You guys also know that I've tested out Ultra Color Max which is Transfer Express DTF Transfer and the DTF printer has taken over the t-shirt community. To me, this is a good thing for the business, right? Because it promotes heat pressing. That's the biggest thing. We all have heat presses. That's what promotes this thing. So if direct to film transfers is promoting more heat presses, by all means, I think that's a really good thing. I do have some issues with it. So maybe we should just get those out the way right away. Now I've been doing this thing since the nineties. I started off screen printing. Then I eventually went to heat pressing after. So I've seen this industry change a lot. I've been around when vinyl boomed. I've been around when DTG boomed. I've been here for the transfer era. I've been here for the DTF thing. I've seen a lot of transition within this industry and I'm talking everything from the at home screen printing setup you remember the you do i don't know if you guys remember this but long time ago maybe early 2000s 2005 2007 time frame michaels and joann's and hobby lobby they were selling this at home screen print setup it was called the you do y-u-d-u and it had like a proprietary screen that you burned inside this unit then you put the screen on top and then you could print on it it was crazy it was an all-in-one thing pretty trippy but i've been around since then to see that go to the consumer base where people started buying a lot of speedball ink because you could find that at michael's and hobby lobby it's a lot they're, they're, i've been around for a little while so in doing so when i was around for the vinyl era when the vinyl thing really boomed and vinyl was really thick back then there wasn't a lot of consumer style cutters at the moment roland was the only one that made one called the sticker and it was mainly it was called the sticker because it was supposed to cut out decal stickers but then people were feeding heat transfer vinyl through that thing and cutting that out i know because the homie bob the barber had one and when i seen it, i said damn i'm gonna get one too like it was just you either had like the really big cutter 24 32 inch plotter style cutters graph tech and rolling were the big dogs and that was it but with that came a negative stereotype that vinyl feels like plastic because the vinyl back then was very very thick and it did feel heavy on a t-shirt so then the vinyl company started making thinner vinyl and when they started making thinner vinyl it came with different application instructions what ended up happening was people weren't using the new application instructions they were using the old application instructions and they weren't laying the vinyl down correctly so now people with vinyl cutters and heat presses were selling thinner vinyl because it felt better but they weren't applying it correctly so by the time they washed that shirt it started to peel up they didn't understand they had to increase the pressure. They didn't understand they had to increase the duration time because they were still pressing like the old stuff, right? So that gives the negative stereotype again of vinyl peels up, heat pressing peels up. It doesn't last after a wash. It was just that the operator wasn't applying it correctly. That's all it was. So there's always been this uphill battle for the heat press, not because of the transfer, not because of the heat press, but because it wasn't being applied correctly. Same goes for this DTF stuff now. DTF is booming. There's so many people that own printers. There's so many people selling transfers. Everybody's using them. Everybody's doing multicolor stuff now, and it's great for the business. It's great for the industry. Everybody's booming. If the people getting into DTF, like using the transfers, doesn't apply these transfers correctly, and they start selling these t-shirts and then those t-shirts start peeling up they start cracking they start messing up it's gonna give dtf and the heat press a bad name all over again right that's my biggest fear of this big dtf boom is this is a really great print technology it's a really good thing for the business owners to use and offer multicolor stuff. But if the business owners aren't applying them correctly, like really doing their research on what's the best settings that work for them, how they wash, if they're just pressing it down, it's laying down, they ship it out, and then that customer washes the shirt and then the transfer falls off, we're gonna have that negative stereotype all over again that DTF transfers are bad 
and that heat pressing is bad. That's my biggest negative downside to this DTF boom currently, is I think a lot of people are jumping in because it's very accessible now. You could buy transfers from almost anybody. There's content creators selling transfers now. So it makes it very easy to get your hands on them. The transfer's good. Whoever's printing them is doing the right thing on how to sell a solid transfer. But if the person pressing the transfer onto the t-shirt isn't applying it correctly, it's gonna give that transfer a bad name. It's gonna give that printer a bad name. And it's gonna give heat pressing in general a bad name all over again. So I highly recommend anybody using DTF transfers, anybody new to transfers, please do your due diligence and test out different settings and find out what works for you find out how it reacts on the wash, and then make the minor adjustments from there to make sure you're putting out a quality product. Don't just press it down, send it out. Know exactly what you're sending out. Know exactly what you're offering your customers. So that way, if the customer ever comes back and says, hey man, my print fell off in the wash, you could tell them like, you know, I've been doing this for this long. I know exactly how it reacts in the wash. Were you doing hot water, cold water? Did you hang dry? Did you put it in the machine dryer? All of that stuff. You gotta be able to work that through because you're offering this to the customer. One, I don't want you to cripple your own business where you start getting negative comments like don't buy t-shirts from this guy because the print falls off now your business is shut down and then you the business owner start to blame the transfer company or the person you bought the dtf transfers from because you're like man you're selling me crappy transfers because they're falling off in the wash not the transfer company's fault it's not the printer's fault it's all about how you lay that transfer down. Do your homework, do your research, learn to apply that transfer correctly before you offer it to a customer. Now, the last thing I'll say about DTF transfers is there's a lot of people torn between buying the printer or just buying the transfers. For myself, I don't see a big need to be the factory. I don't see the big push to own the printer. I'm not trying to cut the middleman out. That's not part of my deal. I don't mind buying transfers from somebody. The reason being is because I own these printers. I know what the headache's like. If I'm busy selling t-shirts, pressing transfers, shipping out shirts, if that's where my money's at, I don't wanna be the factory. I don't wanna be the guy dealing with the printer. I don't wanna deal with those headaches. The headaches I wanna deal with is from the retail standpoint, me selling the shirts, you know what I mean? You have to come to grips with what you wanna do. There's so many people that get caught up in, oh man, if I buy this transfer printer, then I could print for myself and then I could bang stuff out and then I could sell transfers on the side. You wanna be able to understand the business before you invest in something like this. So that way you put all the energy into where the money's gonna be coming in from. If the money's coming in from selling transfers, apply that energy to slanging them transfers. Don't worry about printing for yourself. Don't worry about all that stuff. Worry about selling the transfers to bring the money in. That's something a lot of people kind of get hung up on. And then when they get the equipment, they don't know where to start because it's like, oh, do I print for myself? Do I print for other people? I gotta keep the machine running. I gotta pay this bill off. Then people start to get buried. And once they get buried, that's when they start to get desperate. That's when they start to cut down costs. That's when they're starting to really tank the market because they're like, oh man, I need, I need business anyways. So I'm gonna sell $2 transfers right now for let's say 15 by 18 sheet. And all these other guys that are in business are like, man, man, we charge $8 for our 15 by 18 sheet. And you're going to come in and cut them down and charge $2 because you're just trying to pay off your machine. And then you start to fluctuate the market. I see that happen way too many times, man. It's crazy. So before you invest in the machine and become in the factory and cranking out these transfers, understand what you're going to use it for. Does it make more sense just to buy your transfers from somebody else if you're just pressing them on and selling them? Or does it make more sense for you to be the factory and sell the transfers yourself and you be the printer and don't get me wrong you can do both if you own this printer you do whatever the hell you want all i'm saying is from my experience i understand how you could get caught up in the daydream of the business if i bought this i could do this 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 it's like when people buy those 15 in one heat presses oh man if i buy this i could do hats i could do t-shirts i could do mugs i could do shot glasses i could do whatever else those 15 in one presses do and then they find out all i'm doing is t-shirts now you have all these extra attachments and it's good to have but you don't even use them you know what i mean so remember get a grip on reality before you invest into something like this, understand what you're gonna use it for, understand what you're gonna do, understand what you're offering first before you take on that debt. Before you dig that hole, understand how you're gonna get yourself out of that hole. This is just my take on DTF. I think it's good for the industry. I think it's really good for the business owners. The negative to it is I feel there's gonna be a lot of people that aren't gonna do their research and learn how to press these things down correctly. And then we're gonna go back into that negative stereotype that heat pressing is bad because prints peel up 
prints crack and all that stuff. And it's only based on bad application. You know what I mean? Learn how to apply these things before you offer it to the customers, please. Now, if you own a DTF printer or you use DTF transfers, let me know in the comments. If you wanna share who you buy your stuff from, help somebody out in the comments. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Big Brando TV. Catch you guys on the next one, man, yeah.